Hey everybody, it's Fancy Nightman here, and today I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys an analysis video. Um, not specifically of an opening, I guess multiple openings. I'm going to address some of the issues with some of the openings that I see played on chess.com and the lower boards when I used to play in the 1200 rating area. And let's start off with one of the most simple ones. Um, let me get this ready. Okay, there you go. Um, we see e5 from black, and we see this knight here, and then we see this. Um, this is known as uh, what is it? It's it's just a weird opening. Um, well, black and white can just it's just a battle between the center. But black is trying to support this pawn from the side, which is not very smart because you weaken your king side. And what I like doing against it is knight captures. Now this makes this makes black essentially lose a pawn if black tries going queen here, and you just go knight f some knight f uh, three, queen captures. You have bishop e2, this queen is lined up against the king, and black has a bad time. Black's going to have to waste another tempo moving this knight out of the way from this castle in position. Let's say black made a move. Castles. And now there's a threat of bringing this rook over. So let's say uh, knight d4 trying to attack this knight. We can see rook e1, knight to the power of this file. <clears throat> black's going to have to try something like blocking that diagonal, or that file, sorry. But then after knight captures d4, queen captures d4, um... Black is really gonna have um, black is really gonna have a hard game. Uh, white has control of this open file, open diagonal, and it's just really difficult for Black to get any counterplay. Uh, let's make a move. Uh, what do you guys think? Maybe D5 trying to block off that diagonal. And then we have C3 gaining control of this sort of center. Queen's gonna have to move once more. B6. I'm gonna see B3 defensive move maybe, or we can probably see uh, Bishop captures D5 free pawn. This knight's pinned. So that's the theory behind that. The queen coming out when you see this defense. But now let's say, you know what, that looks like a free piece, let's take it. The issue here comes with queen h5. Queen h5 check attacks the king from the vulnerable f7 square. So black's defense is this, or moving out of the way. Most players would just do this. But then after queen captures e5, as you can see this pawn is hanging, we don't see much. Queen e7. Well, then that just leaves queen, queen, queen captures h8. And white's going to have a smooth game so long as he does not freak out. This is not a real uh, issue. Queen b, rook, the rook's here, but um, bishop e2 should be fine. After a move like um, queen captures, no, not even queen captures, queen captures d2 would be a better move. We can still see rook f1. King, his king is more open than your king, and his pieces are hanging. He's going to do something about this. Knight e7 is probably the best bet. And then we can see d4. Pieces start coming out, possibly to this diagonal, and then um, possibly even this diagonal, attacking the pin piece. And why just have a better game? Queen h3, let's say, and then we have knight c3. Queen, queen h3 is to defend this square. If we have d6, let's say, well, then we can just have bishop g5 attacking this piece and so and black as you can see is going to have a bad time white can just castle and everything we fight on the white side uh, king is being exposed and white is up with the rook so that's an issue I see with the opening if however black does, decides to just move out of the way says haha I'm smarter than that I can see that my rook is going to be taken however you miscalculate for this capture and now the king only has one square and we're going to see bishop here as a response. Now the king has one square, or he can do this move. Doesn't matter. King's going to have to go there anyways. King g6. And this is where you're going to see h4. Knowing that the king has only this square and this square. This green dot and this square here. Left. So black's best response. Let's give black a move. Let's say knight here. Knight here is bad because it leads to mate on the square. Let me show you guys. Bam. King h6. D4. Bam. Diagonal from the bishop. Then we're going to see g5. Bishop captures. Or not even. Not even bishop captures. Why not just h captures g5? Looks better. Bam. And then we're going to see queen f7. Oops. Queen f7. Checkmate. They're blocking out that square. That's right, Shredder. Checkmate. All right. And there's other issues with this opening. Um, no, I guess 
Black's best bet is to try to give himself a flight square, h6, try to give himself that escape square. But then after a move like, uh, let's say, bishop captures b7, rook captures b7, we're not going to see much of the gameplay. Well, no, 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 that's not even bitch. Bishop captured b7 is not a good idea. Or b7, um, g8. Maybe best bet would be h5, followed by king here, and then see what the computer says. Computer says bishop captures b7. b7. I don't understand. Oh, main 2. It's blocking off the diagonal. We're going to have queen f5, then we're going to have g6 captures. So white really has the advantage in this opening right here. So when you see that, and I usually play knight f3. There's nothing, there's nothing to it. Um, this sort of thing fails. Um, white gets a pawn advantage, that's what the computer says. Alright, so let's just another opening. Now let's just say we're gonna be we're black. Um, people usually play e5. I don't like playing e5, it seems boring to me. But defend here, knight here, and then let's say we see the fried liver attack. This is a fried liver attack and it just aims to expose the steps coming square. But I want to tell you guys that don't threat you have the advantage if you are black. Reason why? D5. D5 cuts off this diagonal. And you might say, well, what, what, what about this? It just captures and you just lost a pawn. Well, no, you didn't, because knight i5 attacks this bishop. And now, this bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. So let's say bishop b5. Uh, we're going to see c6, followed by pawn captures, followed by um, bishop cap b, b capture c6. And then this bishop still has no home. Possibly back here. And then h6, kicking this knight away back to its home and then the e4 pushing this knight one more time saying you want this come and get it now we're gonna see queen here let's say queen here um this knight really has to run if it runs here that runs into issue with queen b4 attacking two pieces at once and now this knight's gonna have a bad time um there's no way to defend that knight and this bishop at the same time so this knight if it goes here we're gonna see Bam, g5. Kicking this knight one more time, but this time it's a dead knight. <clears throat> Only safe square is going back. And as you can see, white is doing substantially worse. We we'll see this, we can see this. We can keep the pin on that pawn and on this queen being in that file. And black just has a better time. Um, let's say we don't, we don't, we don't just want this. Let me see. Even if you don't want to play that bishop there because you think it's too too much of a risky move, you could play, I don't know, something like rook b8, getting off of this light square diagonal for this bishop to attack you. Because um, the only defender of this light square is this knight. But in this position, let's see. It's pretty even, actually. So when you're coming out of the fried liver attack, it's fine. Black has substantially better ideas. E5, I mean, E4 is a good move. Uh, what I prefer to play is Bishop C5 in this position. Try to activate when pieces attacking his at square. If he castles, then you can just castle. And as you can see, this game is really going to come out to whoever the better player is. Um, two bishops open thing and open a board, and these knight, this knight and this bishop are doing nothing yet. You have leading development after move like knight here, bishop here. Well, now. We have attack on the rook, rook's gonna have to go to the center. And you're getting your pieces working while he's not getting his pieces working as efficiently because his bishop's still blocked in. You have all your pieces ready. So you can develop an attack maybe. Um, knight over, knight over, attacking the c4 square. Bishop here, bishop, bishop in this area. Bishop trying to get this diagonal. Queen coming out. You have some ideas as black. You're not in the dark. Especially if you feel like this position here, giving up a pawn, is bad. You're in a great position. Position is usually more important than material. Um, that's what I've learned. But, okay. Let's think of another opening that I've seen. I've seen the BAM... What is it? This sort of opening? And what I like to do is play this. I don't know what this opening is called. The Owens? Polish? I don't know. St. George is what my computer saying. And I like to have attacks on this. Um, usually if you have something like this, you have this double attack. 
attacking the bishop and the f7 square. <clears throat> if we see e6 to go ahead and block it, we could still play something along the lines of the knight here. This bishop can finally come out to this diagonal. But then after d5, you start breaking things apart. He captures, um, e captures, let's say knight of 6. We have queen b3, bam, exclam, attacking, getting ready to push this pawn, get ready to attack this. Um, and black's gonna have a bad time. Let's say bishop here. Well, now we just have queen after b7, so that's not a good idea. Um, queen defending. Let's say queen defends. If queen defends, now we just have knight after b, and we're gonna get this knight involved as well. Bishop b7, uh, castles, castles, and then we're gonna see this bishop to g5 attacking this crucial attacker of this pawn. If uh, we don't want to see that attack, <clears throat> if he tries to kick you, however, then you have this sweet tactic, which is pushing this pawn to d6. Reason being is you attack. He's attacking your knight. If captures. We just get a capture, and then after here, we're gonna see this tactic unfold. Uh, so this is an opening that I usually see, and I like playing c4 just because I get the extra tempo. And one more thing about the Smith Moore gambit that I didn't cover in my last video: e4. C5, something that I actually picked up over the course of my club games I've played in the club um, this week, today actually. Um, usually we see something along the lines of Sicilian. Sicilian players don't know about the Smith Mora. They'll try to continue their usual routine. Um, bishop here, Knight here, but now we got the sweet tactic, which is E5. And if they capture this pawn, then you see Bishop captures, King can't go out here to the check. He's forced to capture this. Queen, Queen. Voila, you're done. SpaghettiOs. Alright. So we can see that. Black's best bet is probably Knight going back here. But then <clears throat> you're going to see some issues unfolding after Knight F3 attacking again. And then threatening to attack this pawn again. Uh, we could see Knight C6 defending this. But then after Bishop captures F7, King captures, we can see this E6. And as you can see, this is devastating. If, if King comes up here, well, then we can just see Queen D5 check. King can't go anywhere else. We're going to see this, and then we can see this devastating knight e4. Knight e4, king over here, and we just walk the king into, oops, not there. Uh, walk the king into checkmate, because the king has no more moves, so maybe that. Yep, that. Uh, it says mate in zero. Okay, mate in zero. Um, so that's, that's something that I didn't cover in this Miss Morgan video. A little tactic there. Um, what do you, let's say you say you want to push d5. Well, D5 is fine and everything, but I don't think it's the best move. Bishop B, bishop there, bishop here, and now only now do you see capture. Maybe better move would be knight C6, but then you just have E captures F6. And if you want to just defend this way, I, I definitely don't recommend that because E6 comes into play. And after this move here, now you have this. Queen h5 to deal with, and after this, this seems a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Pretend there's a pawn to capture here, and this rook's under fire. We're going to go here, and then queen captures h6, and this is going to be a bad time for the black king, especially for Sicilian players. Uh, they like solid structures. Um, myself, I like solid structures as well. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I would love to cover. Um, that's it. Alright. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. This is like three openings that I covered and uh, they're really some things that I see on chess.com and chess cube on lower rated ranks um, if you really pay attention to these openings and you got you kind of kind of uh, get the logic installed into your head you would really do better in these games and uh, I, I've actually made mistakes like that where I've actually fallen for them but I guess you get better with mistakes right well um, thank you guys for watching this video I really appreciate it drop down a like if you like um, Leave a comment down below if I missed anything or if there's anything you want to say or cover, um, anything you recommend that I do. Other than that, I think that's all I have to say. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.